pianist and Denny Chambers, clarinetist, composer, and founder of Clarinet Playground. This is video number 28 out of 40, going through all of the etudes in Finger Fitness Etudes Book 2. This one is for Stormy Seas. Stormy Seas is dedicated to Elsa Verder. She is an American clarinetist and music educator whose contributions to the Verder Trio have resulted in an extensive modern body of work for the clarinet, violin, piano, trio medium. Hence the name of their series, The Making of a Medium. I'll share a few notable things about Elsa, but her bio is rather extensive, so definitely look her up and read more about her. Elsa did receive Bachelor of Music degrees in both clarinet performance and music education from Oberlin Conservatory of Music, where she studied with George Walm. She went on to study with the legendary Stanley Hastie at the Eastman School of Music, where she earned both a performer certificate and a Doctor of Musical Arts degree. Elsa taught for many years at Michigan State University, and she received the Distinguished Professor Award from MSU in 1979. In addition to teaching, Elsa Verdere has had a prolific career as a soloist and a member of the pioneering Verdere Trio. She co-founded the trio in 1972, and as I mentioned before, the trio has single-handedly expanded the breadth of clarinet trio repertoire, including contemporary works by some of today's most important living composers, such as Carol Husa, Libby Larson, Gunther Schuller, and Dan Welcher. The first time I heard Elsa perform, I think it was 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, at the 2000 ICA convention that was held in Oklahoma. And I was just completely blown away. This petite body just putting her entire self into the music, almost jumping out of her seat sometimes. And I was just really inspired by how committed she was to the music. So I think that Stormy Seas really fits her personality. Let's take a look at the music. At the bottom of each page in this book, you'll find one or two practice tips. For this one, it says, allow the cadenza to breathe. So take your time, let it be expressive, slow down here and there, and let it relax. At the top of the page, you'll find two finger drills. Now these are very important because these little finger tricks are what is folded directly into the music. So take your time here. So the first finger drill is B to E, and the second one is B to F. Now both of these require left and right hand coordination, plus you can use what I like to call leading fingers. So if you look at the first drill, we're going from B to E. So we involve the right hand and the left hand. So as you lift, think of leading with your top hand middle finger so that it, that it leads upwards first. That way you avoid the little scale up. And then when you go down, lead with your bottom finger, your B finger, so that it lands first. Same idea with B to F. Lead with your first finger, lead with your middle finger as you go back down. You can also hover the right hand middle finger right above the tone hole, and that'll help to make sure your hand position stays in the right place. It can be easy to get a little off center or raise too much, so make sure you feel that B and lift right above, and make sure your movement is going in one nice single direction, just like a trumpet valve, up and down. For the style and character of this one, we have turbulent, hurried with anxiety. So yes, we want it to get fast, um, but start slowly so that you can build it up. And there are lots of slurs, so bring out staccato and tenutos for the contrast. <laughs> Then later, the sweetly and cheerfully sections provide contrast. So here we have measure 17 as sweetly, and then later pick up to measure 25 as cheerfully. Try to make them different and see what you can come up with. rhythm you'll run into things that you would normally see in compound meter so we have constant running 16th notes dotted quarter notes mostly at the ends of phrases quarter notes eighths dotted eighth sixteenth eighths and then some triplets too so let's take a look at measure one the constant 16th notes then measure 17 where we have the sweetly section we have the dotted eighth sixteenth eighth rhythm followed by 16th notes 
In measure 16, we have the first appearance of triplets. It's at the end of a big section, and you can kind of stretch a little bit at the end. In measure 34, in the cadenza, we find more triplets, but please keep in mind that you can stretch and take your time with the cadenza. We'll work on that a little bit more later, but I'll play a little bit right now. And then related to rhythm, we have two hemiola appearances. This is actually the second one that you see here on the screen. We have pickups to 29, where we lead into quarter note, eighth note, quarter note, eighth note, and then we have constant eighth notes, but we're emphasizing two against the three. So that measure can be kind of fun. Bring out the first note of each slur in the hemiola. <laughs> Now I'll take a look at some areas for special focus. The opening measures, of course, are a finger challenge, especially with coordinating cleanly to those B naturals on the right hand. I would practice like six plus one, um, and that would sound something like this. Then we have the pacing of measure seven and eight. Notice that poco writ leading into the odd tempo of measure nine. Notice it sets you up for a nice breath. You can stretch those pickup notes. And then that downbeat of measure nine is like a big arrival point. It's like a sparkle note, something you want to give a little extra time to, a little extra zing, or a little vibrato if you like to use vibrato. And then after that, we have tons of register connections. So keep the air strong, keep the fingers really close, and make sure your air and your wind is really following through so you can connect all those B naturals up and down across the register shifts. Another thing to draw your attention to are these sudden dynamic changes. So if you look at measure 29 and then we lead into measure 30 where we have the hemiola, we have the sudden drop to piano. So measure 29 is actually still mezzo forte, measure 30, sudden drop to piano. And then in measure 36, we have this slight crescendo leading to that downbeat, and we have forte piano for that downbeat. So then we're suddenly back to that sort of smoky and distant rumble of the opening drill. thing to tackle or sort of think ahead about is how you're going to get into and out of the cadenza. There are a lot of pacing things to think about. So 32, we're still kind of a full sound leading into these tenuto B, staccato low B, tenuto high B, staccato low B, and then they're both tenuto. Notice the retard underneath as well. Hold that fermata nice and long, and then you can really stretch and let that cadenza breathe like I mentioned before. Notice the tenutos at the beginning. And then we can hold nice and long at the tenuto down the low B at the forte. And then we have that hesitation leading back into the main finger drill. The last couple of lines of the music is slightly altered from the beginning. So in measure 38, we have this running up, but now we have this little chromatic transition, and then those two pickup tenutas at the end. So take your time on those last two notes. And then measure 42 at the end. That might surprise you because it's a little bit different. There's a little bit of a finger trap in there. So if we look at that, we have B, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, fork B, first finger A sharp, back to fork B, C sharp, D sharp, E, and then we have the triplet figure that we had before. For those of you with a low C instrument, there is a low C option for this etude. It's on page 59. I always say learn the original first as a rule. And there are many areas that highlight the low auxiliary keys. And now for some final thoughts. Stormy Seas is rambunctious and turbulent. 
Take the time to study each dynamic shift and color change so you can bring a lot of character to the table. When I think about Elsa Verdere, I think about how extremely dedicated she is to every single detail of the music. She really puts her entire self into what she's doing. I often give myself pep talks and say, play it like Elsa. Then I know I will feel assertive and totally committed. Have fun finding your own unique interpretation of this etude. To listen to a beautiful recording of this etude and all other etudes from this book, head over to my website, clarinetplayground.com. Trevor Stewart has recorded all 40 etudes beautifully, and they are available for purchase there on my website. Feel free to join us in the Clarinet Playground group on Facebook where we play and post for each other. And head over to my website at clarinetplayground.com for more fun music and books. Thank you so much. (laughs) ¶¶